This is an Electrolux uh, Ergo Rapido Lithium vacuum cleaner battery powered thing, which uh, of course came out of a trash uh, today actually. And uh, the issue with it is that the only thing it does when you try and turn it on is shout at you and give you a red LED. And uh, I've noticed that the fan motor seems to be completely seized in it. You cannot even turn it by force. So the guy at the trash place, uh, said the previous owner had said that yeah, the battery is bad in it, but I don't really think that's the case because you can hear it making a rather valiant effort at actually turning around. There's an actual little physical thump in the unit as it's trying to turn the motor but nothing's happening. And uh, I did notice while well, cleaning the brush thing out that uh, it might have had a bit of a dog pee odour to it, nothing major, but it uh, might be a case that this has gotten liquid damage in some way. But uh, more likely than that, I would think that it's gotten just some something trashed into the fan assembly mechanically, so we're going to have to take this thing apart and see if we can rectify it, because this thing, I mean, it looks very fresh, this thing... It seems like one of those things that you'd give your grandma and she'd never use and this has just been sitting around for years and years. If it's an 18 volt lithium, apparently, so you wouldn't expect it to have been sitting around for too long because I don't think 18 volt lithium stuff has really been popular for a long time and we even have a QR code for all the smartphone-y fancies. So let's just try and rip this thing apart. I've been into a couple of older models of these before. Shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, shut up. So what's the actual model number? NV180LIBRC. Uh, do I have a date code? Uh, nothing obvious. ZB3013. Perhaps 2013? I don't know, it looks newer than that. Yeah, let's just try and get all these screws out and see if we can make any sense out of it. There seem to be torques 10 or 15. Alright, six screws and it seems to be getting it somewhere. There we go. Now to show off some extra dust collecting and what do we have? Well, for start of these, it seem to be just standard 18650s, little brackets. 18 volt, 14, 50 milliamp hours, and these are probably pretty standard tool style high current lithiums. And that's a pretty tiny motor. Looks reminiscent of a drill motor. Electronics look pretty high class actually. Some kind of processor going on there. Seems to be an ST of some sort. Hmm. Yeah, but I've got to get this thing apart. Hey, this seems to be made out of rubber. Hmm. Pretty nice build quantum in this thing, actually. I'm quite impressed thus far. I have a BMSE logic board thing just pops out with two screws there and a couple of little snappers back there, and it pops out a total of one, two, three, four, five lithiums, as you'd expect, and the motor peel off that thing, snap off this thing, and lo and behold, the motor now turns freely, and I think we've found the issue with this thing, because we've got a pretty hardcore rub mark there, and uh, some pretty hardcore rub marks on the fan. So, how much would you be willing to have if this thing's just going to turn on just fine, and sever my hand off if I turn it on right now? Let's uh, get the vice. Alright, let's give this a go. That's an improvement. That's, that's, that's properly terrifying. Properly terrifying. <laughs> wow. So it seems we've got a bit of a balance issue on this thing because that, that shook the entire bench rather. Jesus. It seems, seems the bearings are a bit, a bit rough on this thing. 
I think the fan might actually have migrated outwards. The entire fan assembly has moved this way a bit, because if I look down here in the little slit, I can see that it's not lean, it's not perfectly straight on, and uh, the axle is, the actual fan mount is shown quite a bit. If you just look in there, you can see that the fan is not on straight anymore, and I would believe that that little brass thing is supposed to be entirely inside of a fan assembly. I think we've got our failure mode right there. Now the question is, have the bearings taken enough of a beating to be ruined, or is it going to work fine if I just press this back down and perhaps glue it in? Hmm, and one way to find out. Right, it took almost no effort to push this fan down on back onto its brush mount, and it seems to be quite a lot more balanced now, see? Let's give it another shot at uh, running uh, and uh, hoping that it won't come flying off in my face. Here we go. Sure. It's nowhere near as bad that this thing doesn't sound too healthy now, does it? Microphone probably when you convey properly how scary that is, but it's like having an angle grinder with no eyewear. Jesus. Yeah, it doesn't sound too healthy. Certainly doesn't sound too healthy, but uh, I think uh, for a freebie, if I just glue this down and let it run until there's just nothing left of the bearings, I'll be happy with it. It won't seem much used by me anyway. So, yeah, let's just do that. Ah, if you look really closely, you can see the actual root cause of the issue. The rotor is cracked there and there. So, oh, we've got a third crack there. So it's just been unable to keep enough pressure on this uh, brass uh, bearing holdy thing uh, for it to work properly. And that's why it's let go and finally ceased. So that's the cause. But it doesn't seem to be cracked all the way to the end. I wonder if this is still going to be fine as long as I take steps to ensure that the cracks don't get any worse. So it's going to take an extra bit of glue. Yeah, that, that explains everything now, doesn't it? Hmm. Bit of an odd issue. I wonder if the cause is for cracks or if the cracks are a symptom of the rotor just hitting against the shell and vibrating. Mm, that, that, that's a difficult call to make because you wouldn't expect this to just crack for no reason. But you also wouldn't expect it to just slide off for no reason. Hmm. A real mystery. Oh well. Alright, so what I've done now is I dislodged the rotor again and I couldn't show it because I'm doing it really fast. And uh, I just put some uh, normal super glue in, as well into the cracks as I could and uh, now I'm just using these little toothpicks to force the rotor up which causes it to clamp down more against the axle and uh, I also put some glue between the axle and the uh, fan assembly hoping to stir it up a bit. I'm a bit sceptical about this but I was at epoxy and uh, I'm afraid that epoxy would be a bit too tacky to really make it work. Uh, if this repair fails, uh, thankful for taking it apart this far, it's just a very minor procedure. So if this fails, I could just uh, get some epoxy, which I'm going to do anyway, and uh, try and do like an epoxy ring around it and possibly bury a little bit of metal wire in it to stir it up and really allow it to make proper contact to the brass uh, fitting thing. But uh, I'm going to let this dry now for a considerable amount of time and uh, we'll see how it pans out. Okay, so I decided to take the safe roof rather than the 
dodgy one I was considering earlier. So, while the glue was drying, which it probably still is, I took it and cut out a piece of uh, just normal experiment wire and uh, wrapped it very tightly around uh, the center hub of the fan assembly. Uh, prior to doing that, I took my soldering iron and just uh, dabbed a few grooves into it to guide the wire around and wrap the wire around exactly two turns, taking a lot of care to ensure that that's actually the case in order to avoid unbalance and then I took and uh, just soldered it together all the way around so then I made two turns of wire soldered together very solidly around the centre of this axle and that's just applying some extra pressure and keeping everything steady to make sure that we don't suffer the same failure again after putting the wire in place, I also took the soldering iron and just dabbed it down slightly to push on plastic over the actual wire to prevent it from slipping and flying off. And I think this is going to be pretty sturdy. I think I'm going to just take a slight amount of hot glue and uh, wrap it around here to make it a bit extra sturdy and give back some of the aerodynamic shape of this because this is a very rough at the moment. But yeah, I, I, I was just too sceptical about the just normal express gel glue to uh, trust it. And uh, But I think this is going to turn out quite well. This is solidly melted into the plastic. And there we go. Just the tiniest of hot glue. And to make this adhere extra well, I actually used my hot air gun over there to preheat the rotor very slowly. Uh, just blowing 100 degree air over it to just make it a bit 40 50 degrees warm. That uh, makes all the difference when you're trying to seat hot glue onto something. And then I just applied a dab in the middle and basically let it droop down, kind of s doing a bit of mechanical work spinning around with the uh, hot uh, glue gun nozzle in order to make it move. And it's really. It's really taking the edge off of everything and it's looking pretty even and nice. This might turn out a pretty good repair actually, as long as the hot glue manages to survive the uh, centrifugal action. But uh, yeah, I, I've got good hopes. The surface of this area is very coarse since I used it with a soldering iron. Oh, I guess we'll see, just a few more minutes for me until I can try and turn this thing. Alright, it's had some time to cool there now, it's back to room temperature and I've installed some goggles, so let's give this a bit of a spin. It's going to be exciting no matter what. Here we go. It's certainly turning. It does sound as if it's rubbing against something, but I don't know. Could just be the bearings making a bit of a harsh noise. They seem to be a bit wonky. I'm not entirely certain whether or not they're actually using a motor which has bearings. It's hard to cope with the fact that this motor is producing quite a bit of suction trying to get the fan assembly to move off this way. So it might be a bit worn out like that. I think I'm still going to take then try and lube up the lower end bearing of this motor. I can't access the top one since uh, the uh, I would have to take the fan assembly off and I don't dare try and do that since it's just a press fit I'd have to really tear it off and yeah I yeah no not gonna do that. But beyond that it does look quite a bit better than it did when it came. Oh yeah, kind of assembled back together. I still need to figure out if, how to charge this thing if it requires some extra circuitry in the charging station or something like that, or if I can just uh, hook uh, 21 volts across it. But uh, let's see if it sucks or if, if, if we've failed. That seems to work pretty well. And what about the big handle thing?
This isn't too bad. Not too bad at all. It's even got headlights. <laughs> oh, check that out. It's got a power setting. I need to figure out how to charge it. I've also got a bit of an experimental pinout going on here. Uh, Mushing on this unit, the lowest voltage in the circuit is here, and uh, so that's what I'm going to assume to be ground. And uh, that, that pin, as well as this one, are paralleled up and going to this pin on the base suction thing. So I'm pretty certain this is just ground for everything. This pin and that pin, and this is going to be some kind of sense pin for something. And uh, this pin on the base is going straight to this pin. So I'm assuming that. Uh, where the actual positive charge lead goes and um, this one's got a high voltage on it and it's going off to somewhere inside the this thing so this is probably what's powering all the stuff over here in the uh, brush head so I'm going to try and just apply plus and negative about 21 volts or so harshly current limited to this and see if it goes up in smoke alright so I've got uh, 21 volts current limited to something like uh, 100 milliamps connected to the belly of the beast, so let's see if it'll do anything. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's making a ticking noise and it's jumping off the current limiter, so I'll just uh, crank it up. A bit of googling later, I found out that uh, the original charger for this uh, seems to be just a standard issue DC wall water to 25 volts and 500 milliamps. So we've now got to 25 volts going into this. So, if we're lucky, all the charging smart is just already situated in there and we won't even have to think any more about it. So, let's give it a go 25. Yeah, and that's drawing a healthy 450 milliamps. I'd say that's a pretty good win. Now I just need to put a DC plug on this because I've got no plans for buying an actual charging station for this. Alright, so here's the inside of a base unit. It, it also comes apart quite easily, although you have to take off the vacuum heady thing in order to separate it because you've got some leads going through there. You can also see how this unit really can't have seen much use because this is a pretty dodgy uh, hinge mechanism they've got going here, just plastic against plastic, and it hasn't even worn through the colour of anything, so yeah. I'm betting this thing was a gift to grandma, she never liked it. Anyway, let's adjust to check out the wiring here. So, you know, I estimated on the main vacuum unit that this was the charger, this was the negative terminal, this was uh, the ID terminal, I called it. It's uh, shorted by 300 and something ohm resistor to ground, and I called this one positive, or supply out of the uh, battery but uh, it seems to be a bit cryptic. The charging is pretty obvious because we've got uh, this little thin red wire here going straight to the, the positive terminal in the base and the uh, same goes for the negative on the t charging. We've got uh, the negative wire going into this uh, splice here and then it goes straight to the negative terminal. So yeah, we've got charging there. But it also seems as if this thing is the power supply, the one I labelled ID, the two V brush motor and LED assembly because we've got a pretty thick wire going out from it and down into the brush head. And uh, this seems to be an interface terminal for the buttons. And uh, it's a bit curious how they've done this because uh, the buttons just run off this two conductor wire and one of them goes straight to ground and the other one goes uh, to this terminal which also goes down into the head so I figure this probably is some kind of actual active data line because they've got uh, two buttons going on the same line and they probably have the uh, head identification going as well so this uh, pin probably handles the uh, detection of the actual vacuum head and the buttons at the same time. So if you were to disconnect this, uh, you, the vacuum would know that there's no head connection and it wouldn't allow you to change the settings because you can only run the handle itself on full power. As I think there are some uh, more traditional ways you could go about actually interfacing this. You could have the two buttons uh, shot in one 
one one way and uh, the other one shorting the other way through a diode or something and some resistive thing for identifying the head but I wouldn't be surprised if they actually just chosen to use a microcontroller for it since they cost nothing. Anyway, with this I'm just going to solder on a little DC plug to a couple of the pins here. Probably have to mount it on this piece of plastic, which is the front, in order to uh, prevent it getting all horrible if you try to take it apart again, since the lower half just pops off like a straight piece of plastic like that. Uh, there's nothing connecting to it, which is nice. So yeah, I'm going to have to think about that for a moment, and I'm curious how they've done the buttons. Alright, I have to say I'm curious about this button board, and I'm happy to see they've actually gone a more traditional route, than, rather than just throwing a micro on there. And uh, it's really basic how they've done it, so you've got the ground coming in on the top pin there, and it just runs straight to each end of the buttons, and then they've got uh, two resistors. One, I believe, 472 and one 1002, so what's that, 4.7k and uh, 10k, stuff like that. And uh, we're running those straight back out of the positive pin with a little bypass cap sitting there, so they're just putting out uh, two different voltage levels depending on which button you've pressed. Simple and effective, I like it. So there's probably going to be just a resistor in the head to tell it uh, when that's connected. Now, it turns out I was completely wrong on that one, because in the head, we've got the brain wire going to a micro switch. And uh, the purpose of that switch seems to be to get triggered by this arm here, which seems to identify whether or not a brush is inserted. Or it could possibly be in order to detect whether or not a brush is jammed. But, let's see. Yeah, the switch gets triggered when... When this device is pressed in this... In this manner, so... Yeah, it could be either, really. It, depend, it detects whether or not something is here. Whether or not it's a pressure to detect the brush, or whether or not it's full. Yeah, I suppose it's a bit of a mystery still. But that's easy to figure out once I actually reassemble it and try and use it by just taking the brush out. But there we go, that's all the smarts of that unit. The little LED board there is just uh, hooked up in parallel with a motor it seems. So there's nothing fancy going on with the motors. A cute little belt drive mechanism like that. These are probably going to be scarce and horrible to find in a few years time. Uh, they probably already are. One date in f this thing was uh, copyrighted uh, 2012 at least, and this one might have a stamp as well actually. Yeah, this one's got uh, 1413, so that's week 14, 2013, probably manufacture date, so it's about 2-3 years old, something like that. Not too bad for a freebie, uh, but certainly bad that it didn't last more than that long. Oh, hang on, it seems I was entirely wrong again. It seems the purpose of this switch is to get pressed down by this button. Now that button initiates this mechanism which uh, pushes this metal edge thing down against the brush. I've got no idea what the purpose of that mechanism might be. Perhaps some kind of brush cleaning mode? It just uh, keeps running the brush while you press that? Hmm, I guess we'll find out, but that's that's certainly cryptic. And there we go. DC plug properly mounted. Had to do it on the underside since it just wasn't feasible mounting it on the other side since it's basically just a giant handheld vacuum cleaner mount. But there it is. Shouldn't obstruct anything. These DC plugs are really nice because you can, you can basically just thread an M12 hole, screw them in and fill up with hot snot and they're never going to go anywhere. So, just run some Cat5 round here, round there, and just uglily piggybacked it onto the old charger leads. So that should be pretty okay. I just need to figure out how to get it back together with the slack. There isn't really room for any kind of connector, so it's going to be a bit of a bother, but I think it'll be okay. Right, so everything mounted back together. 
And we've got something hooked up into our new charge plug. So, let's just flip this watch and see if it'll do anything. That looks pretty okay. Yep, that's looking happy. There we go. Now, I wonder if this thing is, is going to charge over 24 volts because that would make getting a new power supply for this quite a bit easier. Yeah, it's going a bit slower, but it seems to work. So I can just use some generic 24 volt supply to recharge this thing. It's probably going to work fine up to a couple of volts above 25 as well. Yeah. I would say 27 or so is probably a decent upper limit. Haven't checked any date sheets or anything, but it seems to be happy enough. So let's see what this switch thing is supposed to do. Nothing if you do it like that. Let's just uh, see if this all works. Medium power. Okay, it's clearly doing something with the, how it's driving the motor down there, but you know, I've got no idea what it's uh, trying to accomplish. Perhaps it's driving it a bit harder in order to clean the brush because that's obviously lowering a blade onto the brush. And you probably don't want to do that at full force. So there you go. Electrolux, what's it called? Ergo Rapido Lithium fixed. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. <laughs>